Good morning, everyone. Jeanette Wallace-Gedge here with episode two of Cobblestones Chronicles. I'll be bringing you more stories about the buildings, the objects in our collection at Cobblestones Museums, and most importantly, the characters behind the objects, because Cobblestones is all about celebrating all the people who settled the Waira Rapa and made it into what it is today. I've got a bit of a theme today. Um, today is all about travelling and about transport. And one of the prize items in our collection is the Pride of the Valley, a beautiful coach designed and built in Martinborough in 1908. Um, I'm just about to... I've just put up on the on the website a photograph of the Pride of the Valley, which is the, the picture of the coach. It carried the mail between Martinborough and Featherston until 1913, when motorised vehicles started to take over. And it still ran until, we think, sometime in 1916 or 1918 when it was retired. Um, we have a lot of information about the, the coach in a book called The Pride of the Valley, which was written in um, the late 1980s by Frank Fife. And I'm indebted to Mrs. Mary Fife, Frank's wife, for permission to to um, quote from the book. And it's, it's also a very useful source of information. So the Pride of the Valley is our pride at Cobblestones. We bring it out on high days and holidays so that people can actually get into it and um, see what it might have been like to travel in a coach like this. A lot of people think, wow, stagecoaches were only in the States or they were only in England. But of course, we had them here too. The coach was rescued in 1969 because it had been used as a, in a farmyard for over 40 years. First of all, used as a children's playhouse, and then it was used as just chicken coop. So you can imagine it was a bit of a mess. Um, it was moved to Carterton, where a Mr George Haltler had agreed to restore it. And... One of the original coachmen, Birdie, Mr Herbert Bird, had retired to Carterton and he, we got in touch with him and he gave invaluable advice and insight throughout the restoration so that you could at least see main, mostly what it would have looked like when it was in use. The pride of the valley, as I said, can be seen at Cobblestones. So you can... You can come along and try climbing into it and having a look. Once upon a time, the Pride used to meet every train at Featherston Station and transport the passengers to Martinborough. I suspect today's buses that meet the train at Featherston Station to go to Martinborough are a bit quicker. While we're on the subject of trains, it's worth acknowledging how important the railways were in early days. There was a really efficient railway system long before motorised transport and railways played an important part in delivering supplies to rural areas. I'm just about to play you a song bemoaning the loss of the ra railway lines to remoter areas. It's a bit of a tall tale sending about sending post holes to outlying farms. It's sung by Mike Harding and it was documented by John Archer. These two people are making sure that the songs of old New Zealand aren't lost in the mists of time. It's great to hear them. So, in a moment, I'm just going to play it. And I hope you enjoy this great song. Mm -hmm. 
So that was Mike Harding singing the post hole song. Sorry about the glitch at the start of that. I hadn't pressed the right button, but um, hopefully I will from now on. Um, keeping to the transport theme, the interesting object that I've chosen today from our collection at Cobblestones is our fire engine. And it's not just any old fire engine. It's a 1954 Austin. And the picture's coming up now on the website. It's the, actually the old Carterton fire engine, which was vendor, very generously loaned to cobblestones by the Carterton Fire Brigade. It's one of only two ever built, and it spent many years as the local Carterton fire engine. I bet it could tell quite a few stories. People often ask, why are fire engines red? Some say it's because in the early days, most cars were black, so red engines stood out more, and, you know, they would want to get past very quickly. Another theory is that red was the cheapest paint available. And yet another theory is that red is the easiest colour to see. That's got something to do with the wavelengths of colours. And yet another theory is to do with red being the colour for danger. Personally speaking, I like the Monty Python explanation. Fire engines are always Russian and Russians are red. So fire engines should be red. I don't know. You can see the fire engine at Cobblestones in the fire station. And for special events, again, we bring it out to drive it around. I happen to know it's going for, a, for its wharf later this week, so we can use it for the Midwinter Festival in Greytown in July. 
There's something about a fire engine that people just love. I don't know what it is. I know that when um, we were bringing it out on Saturday afternoon, because we were giving the fire station a bit of a clean-up, I was talking to the... Um, the main driver, Graham Gray, who's one of our trustees. And I was kind of hinting to him that I would quite like to learn how to drive the fire engine. It's a, You've got to double clutch it, so um could be a bit of a challenge, but, you know, there is just something about them. It's always exciting. And we often park it and let children climb into it. Obviously, we take the keys out before we do that. And the smiles on kids' faces when they've climbed aboard, it's absolutely priceless. Um, I've got another music track now, which is an, another New Zealand song. Um, all the songs that I'm, I'm playing are always New Zealand songs because we have such a wonderful heritage of New Zealand music. This one is called Travelling On. You might know it. It's written by Murray Grindley and it's performed here by Gumboot Tango. Gumboot Tango are all mates of mine. They're a real New Zealand country band. They're just fantastic. So, here it is. Travelling On, by sung by Gumboot, Tram, Gumboot Tango, getting tangled up, and um, it was, and it was written by Murray Grindley. I'm sure you've heard it before. Um, we're very busy at Cobblestones at the moment, planning for our festival of Christmas events in July. There's going to be a lot of things going on, and I'm going to be on again in a couple of weeks' time where I'll tell you a bit more. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it now. But one of the things that I'd really like to do is hear from you about things that you want to know about Cobblestones. So you can contact me through 
email at cobblestones museum greytown at gmail.com or you can drop a note to cobblestones attention Jeanette or you can phone up cobblestones and they will give you um, ways to contact me oh I just want to remind you as well that now that it's winter time officially we're in our winter hours so we are open from 10am to 4pm on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays and Mondays and generally closed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because we don't get so many visitors in the winter time but of course in school holidays we'll be open again um, we're bes- as I said, we're very busy planning for our Festival of Christmas events. There's going to be a lot of things going on and we have something every Saturday with a bit of a theme. So the first one is a woolly good Christmas. Sorry, I know it's a bad pun. But it's going to be all about sheep because one wrapper was really built on the sheep's back, wasn't it? So there's got to be lots of, uh, there's going to be a fashion parade or display of wool garments. There's going to be, um, there's going to be some people knitting. We're going to try and knit a giant Peggy Square blanket so you can come along and knit a few rows. It would be great fun for the kids to be able to do that. Show them how we knit or crochet. There's also going to be lots of food and things available to buy and themed around lamb. There's going to be sheep shearing. There's going to be, uh, you'll be able to make a miniature sheep in the wool shed and you'll be able to see spinning going on and weaving. And some of the, um, some of the, other ladies there will be showing you how to knit if you would like to learn. On the 10th of July, we've got a celebration of Matariki, which is going to be just delightful with uh, an origin story so you can hear about how Matariki was what what the story is behind Matariki and you'll also be able to stay on after that and do some stargazing because of course Matariki is all about the stars and that's how we know it's Mata, Matariki and the new start of the new year. Um, on the 17th of July we've got a very Victorian Christmas and we're going to be having a beautifully dressed Christmas tree in Victorian style. There's going to be lots of us wandering around wearing our Victorian costumes, which one of our lovely volunteers has helped us all design and make. And she's a real expert in Victorian costume. So they're actually quite authentic. I myself have the most stunning um, underskirt and skirt overskirt, which took yards and yards of material. Um, The underskirt itself has 12 metres of material in new coinage. Um, our country fate on the 27th, uh, 24th of July will have a oh, best home baker competition. We'll also have the very traditional beer tent, of course. Uh, we're going to have lots of old fashioned races like the sack race, the three legged race, the hobby horse race. It'll be really good fun. And the Best Home Baker Competition, our Mayor of South Wairarapa, Alex Bajan, is going to come and judge the best fruitcake. And Mr Adam Blackwell, who's well known as a connoisseur of shortbread, is going to come and judge the shortbread competition. There's lots more, um, there'll be lots more information on our Facebook page shortly. And then on the last day of last Saturday of July, we've got transport through the ages. And we're going to have uh, lots of different vintage cars, um, some uh, newer cars, but still definitely classic and vintage cars with their owners there. And we're going to have um, a really 
a, a really good competition for bicycles. So what we're saying to you is pimp up your bike, decorate it and bring it along and we'll have a parade of bicycles going around the grounds of the museum. We'll also have our old bath chair up and going around the grounds of the museum, which is um, from, we think, somewhere in the 1920s. So it's always a lot of fun seeing all these wonderful old cars and having a really good time. I hope you've enjoyed a little taste of what goes on at Cobblestones today. I'm going to um, play you another song now. It's someone a song that you might have heard. It's about another form of transport, about shipping. And this is the song is Soon May the Weller Man Come. It's had a recent burst of fame on the internet. And it's actually about a supply ship for sailors, for whalers. And although it's become an internet sensation, I wonder how many people actually know that it's from New Zealand. And it's about the supply ship coming to supply the sailors with the tea and the sugar and the rum. Here it is. It's sung by Mike Harding. Um, We don't actually know the origins of this song. It's a traditional song, but it's really well worth listening to. The ship that put to sea The name of the ship was the Billy of Tea The winds blew up her bow Dipped down, oh blow my bully boys below She had not been two weeks from shore and down on her right whale bore The captain called all hands And swore he'd take that whale in tow Soon may the wellermen come And bring the sugar and tea and rum One day when the tongue and is done The whale's tail came up and caught her all Hands to the side, harpooned and fought her When she dived below No line was cut, no whale was freed The captain's mind was not of greed But he belonged to the whaleman's creed She took the ship in tow Soon may the whaleman come And bring us sugar and tea and rum One day when the tongue and it's done We'll take our leave and go That was Soon May the Wellerman Come. Great song. And thank you for listening today. And I'll look forward to being with you again in two weeks' time. Have a great couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>